Hi, I'm Matt Prouse, I'm from Bristol in the United Kingdom, and this is my supercharged Honda Civic Type R EP3. So what got me into Hondas, uh, a good friend of mine, he uh, purchased an EK9 Civic Type R um, and upon his first night of ownership of that car, he came around, picked me up and we went out and spent six, seven hours um, ripping around in the car and it was two full tanks of V-Power later and I was absolutely captivated by the kind of changeover at 6000 and even though the rawness of that B series isn't what I've ended up with, I knew from that moment on that a Type R some description had to be mine. So the reason I got an EP3, um, back when I was 17, the car had been launched three years prior, uh, 2001. Uh, I was giving away my age a little bit, um, but myself and friends, when we were driving around in our courses and Saxos and Ford KAs and so on, uh, this was the car which was holding a lot, a lot of presence on the road. Um, and of course, it's not huge over the pond, the EP3, but here in the UK, a uh, very, very popular car. And initially being that age, it wasn't obtainable. So I had to work my way up through EP2 status before I could get to an EP3. Um, and then ultimately evolve it to the point of, of what I've got here. Uh, so this particular uh, model I've had uh, for just over five years uh, and it's something that I have uh, transformed into what you see it as today. Uh, originally uh, looking very OEM. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the front end is Mugen style. Uh, as you'll probably be aware, Mugen don't actually manufacture carbon fiber parts. Um, so with that in mind, I've had to go uh, for Seaburn bonnet, uh, again, carbon grill, carbon bonnet, um, air duct and carbon lip as well. Um, it's got genuine Jays Racing front fenders, um, JDM wind deflectors uh, and custom APR uh, GT3 carbon fiber back plates with universal APR GT3 mirrors. So uh, wheels and tires, we've got uh, Ray's Volk T37s. Um, they're in a staggered fitment, so reverse stagger being front wheel driven. We've got a 17 by nine offset of 22 on the front, uh, wrapped in a 245 40 17 uh, 8080R Advan. And on the rear, we have a 17 by eight and a half 40 offset with a 225 45 17, again on an 8080R. So engine wise, we've got a K20A2, of course, with a Jackson Racing Supercharger running an 8 PSI. Uh, it's got 650cc injectors, um, Group M air intake, uh, and then we have a uh, DC Sports uh, exhaust manifold with a solid fab uh, three inch cat back system with a titanium dolphin tip. Uh, so it's been mapped by Paul West at TDI North uh, to 317 brake horsepower, 210 foot-pounds of torque. So it's got an M Factory helical LSD uh, with time coilovers, uh, fully poly bushed all round, uh, uprated engine mounts, uh, rated gearbox mounts. Uh, in terms of bracing, we've got uh, a Jays Racing uh, front upper strut brace, Jays Racing rear upper front strut brace, JDM rear lower front strut brace, and a 24 mil Progress lower rear strut brace. Uh, that's then with uh, Skunk 2 lower control arms. Interior, we've got a uh, SW Motorsports rear half cage. Uh, that's also with a custom titanium C-pillar brace. Um, the interior has been completely flocked. Um, FCM Motorsport are the wizards behind that. They've done the dashboard for me. Uh, and when I decided to strip out the rear of the car, rather than just having it bare and looking a bit like a tin can, I wanted a more club sport feel. So I asked them to take up the challenge of um, flocking the rear of the car whilst actually then fitting the cage as well, um, which I'm, I've been informed was, was no easy feat, but they did a, an absolutely superb job and knocked it out of the park. Seats, we've got Vicaro pole position FIAs. Uh, they're sat on Bride RO uh, lower seating mounts. Uh, we've got the Carter Drift 3 harnesses, Mugen steering wheel, three DEFI gauges, uh, Chasing J's titanium bolts, and an ASR hub and spacer. So the gearbox is a hybrid racing short shifter, uh, and that's with a EVS tuning titanium shift knob. Our favorite part about the car is uh, probably the M Factory LSD. Um, 
along with the Jackson supercharger. Uh, those those two modifications on their own completely transform this car. Um, the LSD, I mean, this car is renowned for its chronic understeer. The LSD absolutely changes the way this thing drives. And then, of course, the, the supercharger for the extra power, and not only that, the noise is, without a doubt, very captivating. By no means is it done. Uh, it's still got future plans for this car. Um, where, where do you stop is, is, is an important question to ask. Um, I, I've still got kind of ideas and aspirations to go, not quite nut and bolt rebuild, but certainly full respray, having the engine bay uh, certainly tidied up because it's um, very functional, but not very pretty to look at at the moment. Uh, we've, we've referenced to uh, kind of genuine parts. I mean, I'm a big believer in buy cheap, buy twice. Um, and as much as uh, I've tried to prize this car on being as authentic and as genuine as possible with the parts that have been very carefully chosen. Uh, as you'll probably tell by the, the, the Mugen style carbon front end, uh, Mugen don't, don't supply carbon parts, but however, I really wanted that contrast of carbon and cosmic gray to work well together. Uh, so I had to make that, that decision, that sacrifice um, to, to not completely go down a genuine Mugen front end. Um, but it was for, for hopefully the right reasons. So reference to uh, all the other parts in the car, um, not all of them were purchased brand new. Um, and of course with authentic JDM parts now, to get them brand new is sometimes impossible because a lot of them have been discontinued. Um, so to really carefully be patient uh, and wait for these parts to appear on the second hand market, um, which you know is gonna be the right choice and the right, um, not asset but the, the the right carefully selected part for your car is ultimately um something that i'm, I'm a believer in uh, so a massive thanks to john at fcm motorsport um mostly he did uh, all the flocking of the interior fit in the cage you know taking on challenges that not a lot of people probably would uh, and a big thanks to tom gannon at tgm sport he has meticulously looked after this car um, in my ownership for the past five years and even prior to that with the previous owner so this car has had nothing but love from from tom uh who speaks very highly of the car which is a massive massive uh reassurance to me um of course i can't forget two other people uh, my dad he's like a personal mechanic to me at times um always there to support me and ultimately my partner jen who's a jdm ep3 owner and yeah without her kind of by my side and being so understanding i probably wouldn't be able to have a build uh, quite to this caliber today <laughs>